While the defense secretary set off political fireworks at the Pentagon, on Capitol Hill, the Secretary of Homeland Security assured a Senate committee that Americans can enjoy July 4th fireworks and other celebrations safely. Miranda Khan has more. J.D., right now, sources say there's no credible threat of terrorism here at home, but for the more than 3 million Americans who are expected to fly this holiday season, they can expect some noticeable changes at the airport. While Americans look forward to the sky being lit up with fireworks, a stark reminder of what happened a world away still lingers, and its impact continues to be felt here at home. The American public should expect to see this July 4th weekend an enhanced security presence at airports, train stations, and other transit centers across the country. While sources say there are no specific or credible security threats known to the U.S. heading into the holiday, many Americans remain on edge. And situations like this only appear to be adding more fuel to the fire. We do have, as reflected on the news, an unfolding situation at Andrews Air Base, um, which may require that I take a break from this session. The unfolding situation turned out to be an active shooter drill and not an actual shooter. But the mass shooting in Orlando is real, and so is the terrorist attack in Turkey. So far, based on what we know, it appears there were three attackers, three explosions, a Turkish newspaper just released this video showing what appears to be the alleged attackers, who, according to a senior Turkish official, come from Russia, Uzbekistan, and Kyrgyzstan. And while no one has claimed responsibility, both Turkish and American officials agree. This has the hallmarks of an attack by ISIL. And Turkish officials also now say they have strong evidence that the attackers came into the country from Raqqa, the ISIS stronghold in Syria. And speaking of Syria, J.D., it's also important to note that Secretary Johnson just announced that 5,000 Syrian refugees have been approved for resettlement here in the U.S. with another five to 6,000 on the way if they pass security checks. J.D., back to you. Uh, Miranda, I'm tempted to ask what security, but that's another topic. At any rate, you may have some questions or comments, and we invite your calls over the next hour at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. Call us with a succinct question or your point of view, and we'll get you on the air at 1-877-NEWSMAX. Now, for more on the story, we're pleased to be joined by former NYPD Detective Tom Ruskin. Tom's currently with the CMP Protective and Investigative Group Incorporated. He joins us from Newsmax New York. And joining me here on the anchor desk, former FBI agent Chad Jenkins. Chad is also the founder of the Jenkins Group. And before we get to security concerns over the holiday weekend, Chad, we should note for the record, you're a West Point grad, the former Army quarterback back when you guys used to beat Navy. And also, in a more serious perspective, you commanded forces in harm's way in combat in Fallujah and other locations. So I got to get your take on this lifting of the ban on transgenders to be part of the fighting force. Yeah, within the Department of Defense, for us to be fighting cultural wars uh, when we should be focusing on fighting real wars overseas and eliminating the threat of ISIS and other terrorist organizations, it's quite baffling. And JD, we're talking about such a minute percentage of individuals that this affects within DOD. I don't know why it has to be on the forefront of uh, Ash Carter's uh, speech today. Especially when we consider what just happened in Istanbul, what could happen here in the United States. And let us talk about the situation as concerns are very genuine here that there could be another attack on the homeland. Now, we heard HHS Secretary Jay Johnson testifying in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee today at an oversight hearing. He says the attack in Istanbul was most likely ISIS and that security here in the homeland will not falter. This has the hallmarks of an attack by ISIL. As I said last month, we will not shortcut aviation security in response to increased travel volume or longer wait times. Tom Ruskin, given your background with the NYPD, how do you think the increased security presence will work out this holiday weekend? Do you think HHS can cover it? 
I think that they'll do the best that they can. We are always fearful from a law enforcement standpoint of the lone wolf or the two or three people who don't consult with anyone who decide to pull off this attack. Istanbul has very, very good security. Security there did what they had to do. They took down the two guys who made it inside the airport and the third guy blew himself up outside the airport. In New, in New York or any other metropolitan hub in this country, the possibility exists that someone or a few people could do what happened in Istanbul. Security would take them down, but how many people could they hurt or injure in the process? There is always that prospect, no matter the level of security. Let's go to the phones, and first up, from Garden City, New York, we welcome Marsha to Newsmax Prime tonight. Hiya, Marsha. Hi, J.D. You might remember me. I was the one that asked uh, if you would be the second on the ticket with Donald Trump at some point. And the answer, provided Miss Mary and my employer say yes, is yes. Now, <laughs> your, your question tonight, Marsha. Well, I, more of a comment. This is such a ridiculous thing that they, they said today about, oh, yeah, go on, enjoy the 4th of July, and don't anybody worry about things. Well, first they sent kind of two different messages. It's kind of like, be alert, and then it's like, oh, yeah, enjoy things. Everything's fine. Listen, the 4th of July is like a great holiday for ISIS or terrorists to uh, go out and try to cause mayhem because you have fireworks blowing off, so who's going to pay attention to anything going on? Number two, it's the end of Ramadan. And from what I understand, there's like you get double the um, double the bonus instead of seventy virgins, you get 140 or something. Mm. If you do it during Ramadan, uh, something in the Quran, I don't know. Yeah, well, uh, you you've raised the point, Marcia, and let's take it up with our law enforcement professionals. Uh, first of all, to Chad, situational awareness. These Islamic terrorists love holidays, anniversaries, commemorations. They do, and you're absolutely right. With Ramadan here, they would love nothing more than to conduct chaos here on our Independence Weekend and also with it being Ramadan. The one thing I'll say, though, is I don't think we need to just negate the fact that once Ramadan's over, the threat goes away. I mean, we're, we're very deep into it, and the threat is continuously going to persist, whether it's Ramadan or whether it's not Ramadan anymore. Uh, Tom Ruskin, let me turn to you, obviously, in New York. Uh, it may be local law enforcement, but it's got national and international overtones. And uh, we look at the situation there, especially. They've, they struck 9-11. They've tried to come back. Uh, is the Big Apple one of their big targets always and forever? I think that New York and New York officials, FBI, New York City police understand that we're in the crosshairs of a terrorist attack. I mean, you have the financial centers here, you have the ability and the symbolism of capitalism is right here in New York City. So it's always the case, but the New York City Police Department takes every precaution possible to protect the people who are tourists here as well as live here. You know. We go back to that lone wolf. If you have that lone wolf who hasn't discussed it with anyone, who goes out, yes, someone like that could cause havoc on the 4th of July, or as Chad says very eloquently, any other day of the week. Well, it was not just another day of the week on Capitol Hill. That oversight hearing for the Judiciary Committee there on the Senate side, Ted Cruz took on Secretary Johnson for the administration's policy of scrubbing, or scrubbing radical Islam in other terms when referencing terrorism. Let's watch the exchange. You're entitled to give speeches other times. My question was if you were aware that the information has been scrubbed. I would note the title of the hearing on Tuesday was Willful Blindness, and your testimony to this full committee now is that you have no idea and apparently have no intention of finding out that's not what whether I DHS materials have been scrubbed. When you see the red flags of radical Islamic terrorism, you do not follow up on them effectively, and we have terrorist attack after terrorist attack after terrorist attack that could have been prevented but for this administration's willful blindness. Chad Jenkins, let me ask you, this has been an ongoing problem at the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. This administration will not use the term radical Islamic terror. It just continues to baffle my mind. I think when I was an FBI agent in 2009, and the first time that we got taught our counterterrorism training, 
The first day we learned about radical Islam, about Sunni history, about the history of Islam. You can't do your job if you don't know what you're facing. You can't recruit sources. You can't target subjects. And for us to continuously say as an administration that this is non-existent and it doesn't play into the factor, new agents are being trained or ill-trained and unequipped when they're going out to protect us. Yeah, the, the whole notion, cultural sensitivity and omitting likely aspects of life or saying, well, these are areas we're not going to discuss. Or as we saw with the San Bernardino people, they had the uh, the social media, the Facebook pages. They were clear on their intentions. Gentlemen, we know you're very clear on your intentions. You want a safe holiday weekend on July 4th. Chad Jenkins here at the anchor desk. Tom Ruskin at Newsmax New York. A glorious fourth to you both. When we come back, the GOP elites, what will it take to get them on Donald Trump's side? We'll talk about it next.